This week on The Splash, we take to the trees, receiving a special key, and later some purposeful pasta. Splash is a production of Civic Center TV. We're a news magazine that covers everything from local news to feature stories. Also, that we can bring you the latest from the greater West Bloomfield area. And now, let's dive into The Splash. Welcome to The Splash. I'm Jake Kustash, and hey, thank you for joining us. The Jewish Community Center, along with Tree Runner Adventure Park, hosted a beginning of fall event to spread awareness for those with special needs. I visited Climb for Cat to get the story. I am in the woods at the Tree Runner Park in West Bloomfield, here attending the Climb for Cat event. Climb for Cat is a family event that we're doing to support individuals with special needs and raise awareness and acceptance. So we've got some activities here that are fall related and then we also have the opportunity for families to climb at Tree Runner. Events like this are important because one, they help raise awareness and a lot of times people make mistakes simply because they don't know. They don't know a better way to interact with people. So by having special events like this where the whole community gets to come and enjoy the environment and celebrate the, the season of fall and learn together, um, it also provides an opportunity for those who are usually left out of events like this because of the noise or the big crowds to have a chance to really be engaged with the activities. We like to do a lot of collaboration and different opportunities that our, our families with special needs can come and enjoy. So this event is also sensory friendly. So we try and spread things out a little bit so it's more comfortable and every family has the opportunity to have, to make memories and do you know fall themed activities. The Climb for Cat event included many different activities for people with varying ages and interests to enjoy. Right now we've got cider and donuts, we have pumpkin decorating that's available, we have a bounce house, we're doing some fall themed games, we've got some pumpkin relays to kind of promote some physical fitness, and then we've got Tree Runner in the background. It's a really great opportunity that the different levels of abilities, people can climb at whatever level they feel comfortable with. So they're completely harnessed in and safe. There's no way that they can hurt themselves. And they can go as little as two feet off the ground or they can go all the way to the most difficult level and you know they're up around 50 feet high. Yeah, so this is the harness that the climbers wear when they go up into the ropes course at Tree Runner. So they're always, um, they're connected by two points at all times, so there's no way they can fall out of a tree. Um, and this is adjusted for anybody five and above, and it's very comfortable. It's, it's what you wear up in the trees, and it's part of the routine. So The goal of an event like this is to not only have fun, but to make sure everyone can have fun. Our department, Special Needs Department, is all about inclusion. So when we throw events, we want to make sure we're partnering with other departments so that we're we're being inclusive and we're inviting everyone to be part of it who wants to be because um, that's our main goal is to have fun, have an event where everyone can participate and have fun. There was fall fun for everyone involved and reporting for The Splash, I'm Jay Kustash. You can find more information on our website at civiccentertv.com slash climb for cat. Next up, the West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce held their annual Key to the Township Awards honoring business people in the community who are doing great things. Lawrence Nyland stopped by the wards to bring us the story. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am so pleased to have everybody in this room tonight. You are all amazing and, wow, a lot of smiling faces. And with those words, the 13th annual Key to the Township Awards Dinner was kicked off at Shenandoah Country Club. The event, organized by the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, honored local businesses and leaders for their efforts during the past year to make West Bloomfield and its surrounding communities thrive. Back again to MC this year's dinner was Fox 2 reporter Charlie Langton. Well, this was so much fun. I mean, isn't this fun? You, you're awarding people who just love West Bloomfield, who have been here for a while, or they're brand new, but whatever the common denominator is, these people are excited about West Bloomfield. They're generally business-oriented people, and they're people-oriented people. I've done this now for oh, a couple of years, though. I love West Bloomfield. You can just see the camaraderie in the room, and uh, it's just a great time. People get together, and for the most part, a lot of people know everyone here, so yeah. you, it's kind of a friendly event, mm -hmm. a lot of fun. This is really a very good community. Of course, the evening would not have been such a resounding success without the hard work of the Chamber of Commerce, led by Executive Director Suzanne Levine and President Stacey Zotkovich. And the local West Bloomfield Chamber is paving the way for how local businesses can reach out to its community members. 
I think every community should have a chamber of commerce, a community activist, uh, a group that can get together, but more so is that you have to have a good leadership. And Suzanne is just a fantastic leader because she knows the community, she brings them in. And it makes you excited and proud to live in a community like this. Every community should have something like this. I live in Troy, I know there's a number of organizations here, but I've lived in Macomb County, Oakland County, uh, Wayne, have you ever lived in Wayne County? I don't think I lived in Wayne County, but I would. Yeah. And you know, the city of Detroit, we're seeing that come about right now. And it's the pride that people have. And if you can get a group of people to instill that in the residents, in the business community, I mean, you're on your way. Reporting for The Splash, this is Lawrence Nyland. For more, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash 13 key to the T. Later in the show, a whole lot of pasta, as well as an interview with a state representative. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. This hour of programming is brought to you in part by Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital. Ten years ago, Henry Ford Health System celebrated the grand opening of its West Bloomfield Hospital. Since then, they've celebrated innovative new technologies, medical breakthroughs, and unique approaches to health and healing. To learn more about Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital, visit henryford.com slash westbloomfield10. Henry Ford West Bloomfield Hospital is a proud sponsor of Civic Center TV. Television that's close to home. There's Friday nights on the gridiron, then there's this week in Laker football. Join Dave Scott and head coach Ron Bellamy as they talk about the last week's game, preview the upcoming matchup, and talk to some of your favorite players and your favorite people from West Bloomfield High School. Airing weekdays at 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. on Civic Center TV and on the radio on 89.3 Lakes FM. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm Jake Kustosh. The Rotary Club in West Bloomfield held a special event to support students in our community, and the vehicle for the support was pasta. Tyler Keeft has a story. Well, right back here, there's been a lot of food, music, and fun, all in support of striving students right here in Greater West Bloomfield. The Rotary Club of West Bloomfield recently held its Pasta with a Purpose fundraiser, inviting the community out for a fun night to fellowship and a whole lot of pasta in an effort to live up to its motto of service above self. What we try to do is give back to our communities and actually to the world. We have international projects and we have local projects that we work on. This being one of our local projects that benefits the community. The goal of the festivities was to raise funds for the Rotary Club's Strive Scholarship, funds that support local students by fostering a culture of taking pride in their education and working toward achieving higher learning, preparing them for great studies and great careers. This is for our youth project, so it supports our Strive Scholarships. Strive is, we do our scholarships a little differently than most scholarship opportunities. We look at kids who are struggling and are in the lower third of their class and we select each year two to three students who we work with. Uh, we select them in their junior years and we work with them for a year and a half just giving them support and recognition. The monetary part of it is small but um, they earn their dollars through maintaining or improving their GPA in their last half of their junior year and their senior year. So they can earn $500 a semester toward whatever school they are going to. That could be a trade school, vocational school, two or four year college. The club's ongoing relationship with Greater West Bloomfield students fosters not only a culture of higher learning, but a culture of service as well. As West Bloomfield Rotary inspires and supports West Bloomfield High School's Interact Club in its community service efforts, including a recent project in benefit of animals. Interact Club is kind of like a mini Rotary Club we basically do uh, events around the community and try to make the community a better place. You know, we're raising money for an animal shelter, almost home animal shelter in Southfield, and we're trying to get them. They're they're also a no-kill animal shelter, so we can get stuff for like collars for the dogs that are over there. I see this as a way to you know make positive change in uh, just as many ways as possible, and I really like all the different organizations that we've um, been able to help. Supporting a culture of learning and service is the greatest pride of the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield. Making its scholarships such as Strive mean much more than writing a check. Just as always, a great showing of support for our local students from the Rotary Club of West Bloomfield. 
at Shepherd King Lutheran Church. I'm Tyler Keeft, reporting for The Splash. To know more on this story, you can visit civiccentertv.com slash pasta with a purpose. Now it's time for the Civic Center TV event update, where we provide you with upcoming events around the greater West Bloomfield. For more events coming up, visit civiccentertv.com slash events. Come to Henry's Market on Main. This market hosts a variety of fresh, locally grown produce, as well as baked goods, herbs, salsa, and many other delicious products, including free samples. Learn from expert chefs how to prepare a meal with ingredients grown from Henry Ford's very own greenhouse. This market is open Wednesdays 9 to 5 and is free and open to the public. For more information, go to henryford.com. Fall is here and so is the fall book sale at the library. Taking place Friday the 18th till Sunday the 20th, the West Bloomfield Public Library will be holding a used book sale put on by the Friends of the Library group. The sale will be held in the meeting room and members of the Friends of the Library will also get discounted prices. You can become a member of the Friends of the Library at the door for the sale. The hours of the sale are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day and for more information visit westbloomfieldlibrary.org. Need plans for Sweetest Day? Then head it over to the Santia Banquet Center in Kego Harbor on Saturday, October 19th for the Byron Legacy Show. This show features songs by Tom Jones, Neil Diamond, and Engelberg Humperdinck, all performed by Byron Kinsalmo. There will also be comedy and additional performances and an appearance by Elvis. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. and for more information, visit Byron Legacy Show on Facebook. Dispose of prescription drugs with Operation Medicine Cabinet, happening year-round in West Bloomfield, Kego Harbor, and Orchard Lake, and takes place at the police departments of the three communities. Disposing of drugs is completely anonymous, open 24-7 in West Bloomfield, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. in Kego Harbor, and Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. in Orchard Lake. For more information, visit oakgov.com or call your local police. Benefit your baby's brains by browsing books. Books and Babies is taking place at the library Fridays from 10.30 to 11 a.m. This group introduces babies to books in an effort to stimulate and improve brain development. Along with books, there will be puppets, rhymes, and of course, finger plays. Go to westbloomfieldlibrary.org for more information on the event. Come showcase your business at the third annual Business and Senior Expo at the Temple Shear Shalom. Happening October 27th from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., this expo has 60 exhibitors exhibiting what makes their business great. It is free and open to the public, and for additional information, contact Michael Bellet at mbellet at adt.com. Hey you, yeah, you, do you enjoy songs and stories? Well, you're in luck thanks to stories and songs at the library. Every Thursday from 10 to 10.30 a.m., visit West Bloomfield Public Library for special dual language stories, as well as, you guessed it, songs. Admission is free, and for additional information, go to westbloomfieldlibrary.org. And that's this week's highlights. You can find more events online at civiccentertv.com slash events and see everything going on in the greater West Bloomfield area. We're going to take a short break, but when we return, I'll sit down with Representative Ryan Berman of the 39th District of Michigan House of Representatives. Don't go away. You're watching The Splash on Civic Center TV. Laker football is live every Friday this fall on Civic Center TV, WBTV, and 89.3 Lakes FM. Tune in before every game kicks off at 7 p.m. for live analysis from Dave Scott and Tyler Keith, and then another great Laker football matchup. You can listen on Civic Center TV, WBTV, and of course on the radio on 89.3 Lakes FM and on the web on lakesfm.com. And now, back to The Splash on Civic Center TV. Welcome back to The Splash. I'm joined this week by Representative Ryan Berman of the Michigan's 39th District. How's it going? Good. Good. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the show. So first off, I just want to get into your background and how mm -hmm. did you get into politics? Uh, interesting. I've uh, kind of always been involved in politics because at a young age, my uncle was... Uh, the state representative and state senator for this area. Oh, okay. D yeah, David Honingman. Mm -hmm. And so kind of grew up with it, obviously, in the family of going, doing doors with him and mm -hmm. having that in the background. Um, but he was an attorney, mm -hmm. and my father is an attorney. Okay. And I have an older brother, Tom Berman, who mm -hmm. was actually the county commissioner okay. for this area mm -hmm. uh, for a little bit. But uh, we grew up, and my father said, you're going to law school. Uh -huh. Whatever you want to do after that, you can do. But mm -hmm. it gives you that uh, education, that knowledge, and that empowerment. 
So if you want to go into politics like your uncle, mm -hmm. you have to know the law to be able to change the law. That's smart. You want to go into business, you, uh, you don't have to be afraid if somebody threatens to sue you. Mm -hmm. You'll know your rights. You don't have to go out on the phone and be, call your attorney. Can I do this? Can I do that? You, it's that empowerment. I've always been mm -hmm. interested in involved in law enforcement. And it's another thing. It, it gives you that opportunity to level up mm -hmm. uh, in your career, but also you got to know the law to enforce the law. So having that legal background and uh, gives you options mm -hmm. and abilities. And you know, one of those things was when you have the ability to help somebody, I was raised obviously with public service, volunteerism, yeah. use your skills and abilities uh, to help others. And you know, I saw my uncle do it and my brother ended up running and getting on Kego Harbor City Council, oh, okay. then went to the Oakland County Commission mm -hmm. and uh, I said, yeah, I can I'd like to do this too. I mm -hmm. didn't know if I had the politician, the typical personality to go out there doing small talk. I'm more of a worker guy yeah. who likes to get down to issues and, and do things like that. But I uh, ended up running and, and it worked out and I'm mm -hmm. the new representative for the 39th district. And how long have you been representative? Uh, yeah, so I got elected in November and uh -huh. so took office in January. Okay. So it's been uh, 10 months. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what is your main driver for politics? What gets you motivated? Pretty much just to do the right thing. Okay. You know, what's going to help, what's going to be in the best interests of everybody, mm -hmm. you know, of not only the constituents in the 39th district, which is, you know, number one concern, but mm -hmm. also overall in the entire state. Um, so any type of policy that comes up, it's, you know, how is this going to affect our businesses, mm -hmm. our residents, is this in the best interest of everybody? So what are some of the bills that you've um, passed or attempted to get passed that, you know, focused on your main motivation? Um, yeah, so I have um, 20 bills out there okay. that I've submitted so far this year. And, yeah. and that legal background helps for, you know, looking at maybe something that needs to be changed or doesn't make sense mm -hmm. in our, our current law. Yeah. Um, but my main you know, driving factor is transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's one of the issues I ran on is to expand our Freedom of Information Act. Okay. Uh, Michigan ranks pretty low uh, overall in the country with our sunshine laws, mm -hmm. our access to information. One of those reasons is the governor's office Mm -hmm. um, that we saw with the Flint water crisis yeah. isn't subject to our Freedom of Information Act, the executive. Mm -hmm. Also, the legislature isn't subject to it. Mm -hmm. um, so my first bill was part of a bipartisan package to expand the Freedom of Information yeah. Act to the governor's office, to the legislature, mm -hmm. and my particular bill was called the Legislative Open Records Act. And it, it does exactly what it, it says, is it opens us up mm -hmm. to those uh, Freedom of Information Act type requests mm -hmm. for citizens to see what exactly is going on to get that, that information. So is bipartisan um, working together, is that something that's important to you in politics? Oh, absolutely. Um, and that's what this package was a bipartisan package. And every one of my uh, 20 bills that I've submitted mm -hmm. has been bipartisan, it has both Republicans and Democrat co-sponsors. Okay. Um, and uh, resolution, actually everyone except one uh, this summer when I was working, there was really nobody else around to get okay. to co-sponsor. Yeah. It's not a really controversial issue though. Uh -huh. um, but that's one of the reasons I ran. Okay. You know, we're looking at the divisiveness in this country exactly, overall yeah. at the federal level. Mm -hmm. We're looking at people being disenfranchised, being uh, dissuaded, mm -hmm. dismotivated for even being involved with politics because of how nasty it is. Yeah. And when I was running last year, like, are you, why are you running when yeah. it's so nasty? Mm -hmm. And literally that's why I'm running is to so bring back bring civility, to, okay. you know, bring back discourse, mm -hmm. being able to reach across the aisle mm -hmm. um, and, and sit down and do what's best for everybody. You know, I think there's more that uh, we agree with mm -hmm. than that we disagree with. Um, even within your own party, you're not going to agree 100% exactly. of the time with that party with somebody else. I mean, anybody that's married knows you're not going to agree yeah. with anybody 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fi finding those common issues or common bonds to bring mm -hmm. consensus together. Um, 
and uh, as a as a lawyer, you had to do. I had to do it as a certified mediator, bringing you know parties with uh, you know that could be clashing, mm -hmm. and to say you know, all right, time out. Let's. What can we do to typically have a win-win situation? So, do you plan on bringing this bipartisan uh, you know support higher up? Do you plan on keep running and moving your way up in politics? Uh, <laughs> You know what? Uh, I didn't, mm -hmm. um, you know, envision that. Okay. Um, initially, I believe in the citizen legislate, legislator mm -hmm. go and doing your time and, and coming back. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of those things with term limits. Yeah. My predecessor, Clint Kesto, uh, served three terms. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, all, that's all you can. So you can serve three terms mm -hmm. uh, in the House of two years each and then two terms in the Senate, four years each. And I was a proponent of term limits and mm -hmm. gets things going, but um, now that uh, I'm in and it, it's a conversation and that's brought up, I definitely don't want to be in for, for more than that, but yeah. it's, it's some people that do. You want to have that um, experience mm -hmm. in your legislator. You know, you're coming in and when it flips over like that, you have a lot of new faces, new people, and there's not a lot of institutional knowledge of mm -hmm. why things were. I mean, we were actually voting on bills this term that were just passed last term. Okay. And, you know, with new people, and I was like, hey, this, this isn't, doesn't make sense. Why are we doing this now when yeah. it's just cha the law changed two years ago, mm -hmm. or less than two years, I mean, a year ago. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else coming up, any bills that you got coming up that you want to um, talk about, any issues? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, one of my bills that uh, affects, uh, well, affect everybody in the yeah. state, but in this district in particular, is uh, the Tree Owner Liability Act. Okay. And that's actually coming up in the local government committee on Wednesday mm -hmm. that I'll be testifying in front of, uh, along with Lance Stokes, who's mm -hmm. a planning commission member yeah, of uh, in West Bloomfield here. Mm -hmm. And what the Tree Owner Liability Act, and I've dealt with this situation as an attorney, as a homeowner, and as a, 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 more, a member of the board of uh, my homeowners association. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of neighbor disputes right now where if a, your neighbor's tree falls in your yard, under the law currently, it's typically considered an act of God because when it happens, it's part of a storm. Either yeah. lightning hits it or more in, in what we saw recently in these storms, these uh, great wind storms, the wind is knocking it down. Mm -hmm. So that in, in the legal sense field is called an act of God. And when that happens, you as an innocent homeowner, and you're just sitting there, your neighbor's tree falls, you're responsible oh, really? to, if it damages something, to make a claim against your homeowner's insurance uh -huh. or if not, cut it up, pay for it to be hauled exactly. out and, and cleaned up. And it's a little counterintuitive. You'd think, mm -hmm. hey, your neighbor, it's their tree. their tree. They should be responsible uh -huh. for it. Um, and so what this, this bill does is says, yeah, it's the neighbors, the landowner where the tree is located, it's their responsibility uh, for that. Um, because a lot of times, uh, you know, whether fault or just neglect, People aren't trimming their trees mm -hmm. or really inspecting them, taking care of them. And I think this would bring a little bit more personal responsibility back on that. Um, but it's really kind of how the way it should be. And, and it is in other situations. We have a statute from 1905 that says if your tree falls in the roadway, okay. you're responsible to clear it and, and clean it up. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have anything about you know, private property. So it sounds like it's like an issue that affects everybody, especially in this yeah, Michigan area. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, is there any uh, you know, website or social media you want to? Yeah, absolutely. With? Everything is. Uh, I have uh, www. dot rep berman b e r m a n. dot com. That's my official website mm -hmm. for uh, the state house. Uh, and if you just go to the uh, Google Michigan Legislature He's and look up, up Ryan Berman, that's All the official right. one. Um, but as far as uh, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all that. It's mm -hmm. all the same. It's elect Ryan Berman. Mm -hmm. So it's just the three words, elect all Ryan right. Berman. All right. Well, yeah. thanks for talking to me today. No, thanks for yeah. having me. Once again, we've been joined by Representative Ryan Berman. And on this week's episode of Parenting on the Go, we talk about mental health of our children.
Hello and welcome to Parenting on the Go. I'm Brooke Allen and joining me today is Tanya Petkoff. Tanya is a limited licensed psychologist at Child and Family Solutions in Farmington Hills. And Tanya, thank you so much for being with us. And today we're talking about ways to keep kids mentally healthy. So tell me, where do you even start with that? <laughs> I know, and I, I often think this is kind of a loaded question, but I think the best way we can kind of think about it is maybe looking at it from five major like points. And I think the first one being, you know, making sure that the child and parent has a very trustworthy relationship. And I think one of the best ways that we can do that is through consistency and predictability in our parenting strategies. Because if you go to any local bookstore, there's a thousand parenting books on how to do this. And I think one of the things we have to really keep in mind is making sure that we don't use empty threats when we're parenting, such as saying, you know, if you don't stop this right now, we're gonna leave and then not leaving or not following through on something that we promise. I think another really key important thing is making sure that we spend one-on-one -on -one time with our children. A lot of times in the practice I call this special time. It's you know basically unplugging and spending 15 to 20 minutes with our child. It could be doing something on the floor if they're younger. It could be watching a favorite show if they're teenagers. But just doing something that the kid really kind of is interested in, let them guide it. I think it should be something that we follow through on regardless of their behavior that day. That's just something that they can expect. Okay, let me, let me yeah. ask you a question. Yeah. What if you have, what if there are siblings and you need to divide your time, how do you navigate that? That's a good question. I think one of the things is depending on like family situations, if there is another caretaker or um, parent involved and around, then maybe you guys can even break it up. Like one day, you know, dad gets one of the kids and mom has the other or vice versa. So I switch off. Yeah, so switch off. And I think, you know, it can be something that maybe even you could switch at different times of day. Maybe that kid will have to do something on their own for a little bit while mom kind of spends time with the sibling or vice versa. So okay. Okay. I think another thing, too, is just making sure we instill healthy um, self-esteem, which can be, you know, one of those things like how do we go about doing that. And I often tell parents, I think, making sure that we use praise in an appropriate way. And one of the things I often say is, you know, it can be damaging to tell our child, oh, you're the smartest kid in the whole wide world, <laughs> when reality is there might be other kids smarter than them, right? right? So I think the big thing is like making sure that we praise on effort. So if we see our kid working really hard on a project or trying to gain a skill set, that we kind of bring that to light and say, hey, buddy, you're working really hard on that science project. Mom's really proud of you for doing that. I think also making sure that we give them opportunities of independence, whether it's chores around the house, whether it's helping out with cooking or gardening or something that is gonna give them something that they can then do on their own. And then often I, ask, I tell parents as much as we want our children to succeed, I think it's equally as important to watch them fail and like have them learn from that experience right. too. It can be hard as a parent, but sometimes even for us adults, the best lessons in life are those that maybe don't go the ways that we want it to and to realize we can be resilient and we can get through it. So I think that's another key component as well. And part of that is explaining it as yes. you go, right? Yes. Because yes. if you just kind of do it halfway, then they don't get the whole picture. Or if you helicopter and do it all. You know, I think a lot of times that can happen too. It's like we want our kids to do well, so we think, okay, well, we don't want it to not look a certain way. Or what if it's not, they don't get a good grade, but then they're not really learning the full circle of what goes into something. It goes from like how much effort we put into something, what the outcome is going to be, and not necessarily thinking, well, if I just don't do it a certain way, mom or dad is going to cover it for me, if that okay, makes so sense. Okay, so explain the full circle to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think, you know, like whenever, if we're like tackling a project, say it's a science fair and you know, it's allowing the kid to really come up with the topic, you know, doing the research, you're there to guide them and support them if they have questions, but it's not like we dive in and suddenly we're doing the we're research doing <laughs> or we're staying up until two in the morning to finish that project for them that we kind of accept that this is kind of what they want to do and how they want to go about doing it. And I think that kind of builds that self-esteem because it's really ultimately their project. You know what I mean? So I think that's another key thing. I think another thing is making sure that um, we are observant of our children too. You know, if we're noticing any changes in their mood or behaviors or, you know, maybe not talking about certain friends they used to mention, you know, being self-aware if there's any changes in our family system, if, you know, there's financial struggles, parents are fighting, somebody's ill, 
all of that can be really, you know, important that can affect our children too. So just making sure we're having those conversations. And then, you know, I think the last thing is just leading by good example. I often tell parents, you know, our kids are watching what we're doing. So giving them opportunities to see how to express emotion. I mean, one of the things a lot of times I get from parents is, you know, kids, how they handle anger and aggression. And I think for a lot of us, it's something that we have to learn. We don't necessarily just know how to handle that type of emotion. Okay, thank you You're so welcome. much for all the information. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And thank you for joining us on this edition of Parenting on the Go. And for more helpful parenting tips, you can visit the West Bloomfield Youth Assistance website at wbyouthassistance.org. For more episodes of Parenting on the Go, visit civiccentertv.com slash parenting to go. Now it's time for our final segment, Person of the Week, where we celebrate the people in the community who are inspiring and providing towards others. This week's recipient is Richard Levine of the Line Clinic of Chiropractic. <music> Richard is a second-generation chiropractic doctor here in West Bloomfield. He follows in the footsteps of his father by bringing quality health improvements via chiropractic to the community. He has worked for many years in an effort to improve the quality of life for countless amounts of people in our area, and he's extremely proud to have his son also follow in his footsteps by joining the family business, along with him and his father. This dedication to care in the community for many generations is what makes Richard our Person of the Week. If you know someone who is making a positive difference, let us know and message us on social media or send an email to the splash at civiccentertv.com. We want to congratulate and acknowledge those making a difference in our community, and we appreciate your suggestions. And that's it for this week's show. You can watch new episodes Mondays at 5.30 p.m. Civic Center TV on Capcast 15, AT&T 99, and online HD at civiccentertv.com. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and on Instagram at Civic Center TV. For all of our friends in Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake, Kego Harbor, and West Bloomfield, I'm Jay Kustosh, and thank you for watching The Splash. <laughs>